Hotline Miami sex music. True, true, true. Y'all, we gotta have a talk about um, Costco etiquette, okay? Now, I know what you're gonna say, NL, you've done the bit about the free samples too many times. Was I there yesterday? Yes. Were there uh, complete aisles blocked so that grown adults could sample one-eighth of one slice of deli turkey meat? Yes. Is it the same deli turkey meat they've had since 1994? Yes. Do I blame them? Yes, I do, but this isn't about that. This is more of a... I guess it's not a rhetorical question because I know the answer. Every time I'm in Costco, I find myself asking, why is one in eight adults on the phone uh, in the meat section? Like, are, are they securing financing for the rack of ribs that they're about to buy? It's a big hunk of meat. Don't get me wrong. It's pretty expensive. But like, I, did you not talk about your plan at the grocery store before you went to the grocery store? Like, why... It, we, we, it, it looks like the New York Stock Exchange in the butcher section of Costco. People are on the phone like, yo, how many, how many legs of lamb do I need? How many legs of lamb? Buy, 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 sell, sell, sell. Anyway, it's crazy, man. And they're standing there. They're picking up like a leg of meat that is just flesh and then like comparing it to another leg of meat that's just flesh. And I'm like, don't worry. Like the abattoir has got you. You're not, you're not going to find any arb between the two. They, like, it's priced by weight, lady. Just relax. Anyway, the Balatro patch came out. LeBron James scream if you love Balatro. Ah! <laughs> Look, looking up at the voucher section to see, or looking at the big blind to see what uh, the boss is going to fuck me with. Sprinkling chips on my run. Eating a banana and uh, ramen. I don't know. You get the idea. Someone else better than me can do it. I'll just pretend I came up with the idea and take like 80% of the credit. Weehoo! Holy cow, I curse this stream with low rolls. I curse this car this stream with bad draws. I curse the jokers to be feckless. For what, man? For for what on, on what grounds? It's a little much early on here. It's a little crazy. Hey and now thoughts on uh, the Boeing whistleblower mysteriously dying? Boeing's got to be like the most unlucky company on the planet because this stuff like keeps happening to them. And they're probably like, we want like all this stuff to just come out in like a court of law the way the system intended. But then like all the whistleblowers and key witnesses and stuff keep passing away in mysterious explosions and stuff. And it's like, they're probably like, come on, man. Hi, Tomo. Hi, buddy. Tomo, scream if you love water. Ah! Thanking the clouds for the rain, mixing hydrogen and oxygen atoms in my mouth, drying off my paws after drinking from the water dish. You okay, buddy? So he's doing the arm thing, scratching the shit out of the furniture even though the scratching pad is right next to you. They do be doing it. NL, you must have listened to Euphoria. Vibes are off, don't worry about it. You really have no concept of what it's like to be 35 years old married with a toddler, do you? It's not your fault. Just different, different worlds. I barely listened to, to Pimp a Butterfly, and that shit is like 10 years old. I'm glad I did. Many of those songs have made it onto the Peloton playlist. Favorite song onto Pimp a Butterfly? I mean, it's a little bit gauche at this point. I'm not gonna tell anybody anything they don't already know, but All Right has to be one of the best songs of the 21st century. Okay, I guess we'll go with this as well. But there's a lot on there. Uh, King Kunta is on there. Uh, if These Walls Could Talk is on there. The Blacker the Berries on there. I'm trying to think of what else. How Much a Dollar Cost is on there. We got, a, we got a lot on there. No questions. Gone with the Wind, if it came out in 2024. Frankly, my gyat, <laughs> I don't give a toot. Boop, boop. It takes her photo with a Nintendo DS. Boop. So flicks the propeller hat. Flies away. Straight into the fireplace. You ever see the end of Evangelion? That was like seven memes mixed into one, I apologize. That was word salad. Uh, actually, if you followed the um, the streams over the past couple of weeks, you would you would understand exactly what I'm talking about. I bet he can't combine Mama Liz with hammers. I see what you're saying. It would be like a... Oh, 
Ok, ok, wait, wait, wait. <clears throat> The duet boomer seeing a habanero pepper. Ok, ok, let's dip this guy. Let's dip this guy in Mama Liz's chili oil. Makes me sick to think of what this one's proud institution has become. Makes me want to throw up and cry. Also, I have to say, I don't want to make any enemies, uh, and especially of a, of a company that may well be in the uh, influencer space at some point, trying to get some sponsorships going. Um, but I, in the interest of being the only honest streamer on the platform, I bought something at Costco. I decided to mix up my uh, coffee routine. I've been buying Stoke for a couple of years, and I've been enjoying the Stoke. The first couple of aisles of Costco, they got me. I saw a, a case of drinks and it said, pre-mixed cold brew coffee with added protein. I'm not necessarily a protein Andy, but I, I'm not against it, obviously. I was looking at the, the macros, I was looking at the amount of caffeine and I thought to myself, maybe I'll give it a try. It's called Bruce. I personally, in, in my Honest opinion, I have to give it a 2 out of 5. I would recommend that you do not purchase it. What is why 2 out of 5? Uh, the coffee tastes weak. It simultaneously doesn't really have much uh, sweetness going on. And uh, I, I don't know. It's just I, it, it doesn't taste as good as the Stoke. The extra 20 grams of protein, you know, I'd rather just eat like, I don't know, 3,000 goldfish or something like that to get to the same amount. I'm just not sold on it, let's put it that way. Does it give you the buzz of cold brew? It's actually, I hate to say it because I know Origin's probably here, but um, it has a, uh, a little bit lighter caffeine count than I would like it to have. It put 120 milligrams, or yeah, yeah 120 milligrams of caffeine on the Container, by the way, Con5654, thanks for the gifted subscriptions, thank you. So it advertised 120 milligrams of caffeine. I'm not a chemist, so I just assumed they were putting it on the front because it was a lot. But then I drank it, and I wasn't quite at the same level that I normally am. And I was realizing maybe they put 120 milligrams on the front because they're like, oh, this is um, not that much, so you don't have to stress about it. So I'm, now I'm like, I got to drink two of them to get to the same level of, of buzz. But if I drink two of them, that's like 40 grams of protein on an empty stomach. Like I'm going to break my toilet or something like that. Isn't it the same as a regular cup of coffee? Yeah, but let's be honest. It's 2024. No one's using like cup of coffee as a measurement anymore. Because a a, nobody's drinking a cup of coffee anymore. Everybody's getting minimum grande pike, venti cold brew, cold foam you know, stuff like that. Like a cup of coffee is an antiquated measurement. It's like when people, like on the, the potato chip bag, there's like four chips and then you read the fine print and it's like suggested serving. Yeah, okay, maybe in the Great Depression. In 2024, people are grabbing like two handfuls out of the bag, rolling the top of the bag up, putting it back in the pantry, eating both of the handfuls before they get downstairs, going back up, and then their spouse is saying, why don't you just get a bowl? And you're like, no, no, I'm not that hungry. I don't want to commit to a full bowl. And then just in discreet handfuls, eating like four bowls worth of chips instead. Why does he always spit out these bad takes? Excuse me? It's not a bad take. I'm just trying to make you laugh. Just trying to, just trying to bring a little sunshine into your life. I apologize. You can go back to arguing about Stellar Blade on the platform known as X.com. Don't, don't let me stop you. I'm not going to get in your way. 20 malts. I have the mandate of heaven and you have lost the argument. Hmm. Oh, another one in four chance paid out. I'm God's chosen son. How do you feel about that? Do you enjoy smoothies? Possibly the most overrated food category on the planet, but they're okay. Plus two, plus two, plus two, plus two. Bro, people hate smoothies. I'm bringing them back. Why do smoothies annoy you? I wouldn't say they annoy me. I would say I choose not to purchase them most of the time. 
Now, why do I not purchase them? Let me count the ways. They tend to be expensive. They taste pretty good, I'll give them that, but also they're not really good for you. It's not as bad as drinking like a milkshake or something like that, but they're not, uh, I wouldn't describe it as a healthy food necessarily. And also, I mean, I'm a, I'm a simple man. I'm, I'm like a ready-made drink sort of guy. I'm not gonna, we went over this yesterday, I'm not gonna have jelly, uh, jello shots, I'll just have a beer or something like that. And by a similar token, I'm not gonna put the Greek yogurt and the chopped fruit and the protein powder and the psyllium husk and the lemongrass. I'll just grab a Coke Zero out of the fridge or like a water or something like that. Or like a Bruce caffeinated cold brew, like something like that to get my day started. I guess, you know, not, not to have like a pun intended sort of moment, but at the end of the day for me, it's like the juice isn't worth the squeeze. Smoothies not healthy, but Coke Zero's healthy, make it make sense. It's like that classic tweet. You may not know it if you're not a, a, a scion of the genre. It's um, when a coffee head hits you with something so morning soda phobic, you just have to hit him with the Coke Zero stare. You don't, don't plus two me for that. That's not my joke. But like, it, it's my, re unless you loved it, in which case it's mine now. You don't have to pit two bad bitches against each other. The, the, the bad bitches you pit against each other is uh, caffeine addicts, of which I identify as a protected class, uh, versus people who think that if you ever consume caffeine, you're basically on the same level as like a fentanyl addict. Like you literally, you're out, out there like feral if you don't get your cup of coffee in the morning, but it's fucked up because like society like allows it to happen. Like, does anyone else see how messed up this is? People hate caffeine so much, but if you tell them not to drink water, they'll shoot you dead. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, I don't really see how um, that relates to what we were talking about, but it sounds like you agree with me, so I'm gonna say, yup, so true. Sounds like we're kind of on the same page on that one. I, do, I, I think I kind of agree with the spirit of what you were saying, which is that people... Die. You gotta be careful with this one, especially if Origins here. I know Origin doesn't like this one. People riz up water like a little bit too much these days, in my opinion. Now, it's obviously something you need for life. We're made of it, essentially. But like, I, you know, I'm, I'm a little like, maybe it's just because I'm capable of hydrating myself. But I, nothing tilts me more than like somebody telling me to have a glass of water. I'm like, I know, bro. I'm like living life as an adult. Like, trust me, like, dr drinking enough water every single day is just, like, the foundational level of, like, starting your day as an adult. Shit gets way more complicated than that. I don't hate you for, for passing on the message, but your kidneys are fricked? Bro, my kidneys are probably the only, only part of me that's chilling, to be honest with you. I'm, the thing is, I, as a hydration disrespecter, I'm probably more hydrated than the average person. Not that anybody, because I see you freaks out there with your three liter jugs. And then like it has little measuring lines on it that are like, good start, you can do it. Is it lunch yet? We're almost there. You're a star, you know? I'm not as hydrated as you because you've made it like part of your personality, but I'm like, I'm hydrated, bro. Like how many, how much fluid am I in already? One can of Coke Zero, 355 milliliters, cold brew coffee probably about the same. So let's put us at 700 milliliters. One full uh, water bottle on the Peloton. So that's probably a liter. So I'm at 1.7 liters. And then a glass of water with breakfast. I'm at like two liters already. It's 9, 12 a.m. And you're telling me that I don't respect water? Maybe it's just because in the modern generation, society hates to see a motherfucker doing things and not talking about it. Because people love talking about shit that they're not doing. Hey, I was just on a call with a client closing a 10 minutes. No, the fuck you weren't, bro. You are chat GPT. You are a robot. Knock, 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 knock. You're made of rocks, motherfucker. Act like it. We're out here soul maxing, okay? These robots wouldn't understand. Early ass ride the bus, but it costs us... Does it really cost us $3 per... round? Yes, it's gold steak. Listen, the patch came out literally yesterday. So let's just cool it a little bit on the how did you not know that. I mean, I gotta be honest with you, brother. We're playing straight dog shit, dookie, diarrhea, Fred fucks, who made this, you can walk over it to your hands because of half Joker. 
So we should, in my opinion, hand size doesn't matter. We can ectoplasm ourselves. If you see this, you will die in seven days. If you ever open up a pack of magic cards and you see this, get your affairs in order. Would you pack one, pick one, the nightmare card that makes you die in seven days if it was a two mana 4-4 four, four that draws two cards on enter the battlefield? Um, it depends. On Friday night magic draft? No, absolutely not. On the, At a GP? Round six at a GP, I would take that any day of the week because, you know, some things in life are priceless. For everything else, there's MasterCard, bro. Popcorn that costs you $3 a round? What is this? Going to the movies in 2027? Me when AMC releases pay by the Colonel popcorn pricing? <gasps> no, no, it's really good. It's really good when you just want to eat like four or five Colonels. Yeah, but what if you want to eat a thousand? What if you want to eat a thousand kernels, Nicole Kidman? I'll never financially recover from this. It's like four bags. Nah, I don't think so. I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I would think it's probably one eighth of a bag. Apparently there's an average of 100 popcorn kernels per bag. I'm just going to level with you. That's European posting. And I, I, you're probably better off for it. Don't get me wrong. But that not in North America, absolutely. I'm not even talking about the U.S. In Canada, a hundred popcorn kernels. That would be like I don't even think they sell a size that small at the movie theater. Do Europeans eat popcorn? I'd have to assume that they've considered it. It's got to be like the most American snack of all time, though, right? It wasn't that shit invented at like a World's Fair. Oh, actually, in the Cradle of Civilization at the intersection of the Tigris and Euphrates, they found uh, old popcorn. Okay, okay, but like, when I think of popcorn, I think of a dude in a, like a white hat with like a, a top on it with red stripes and he's wheeling around like a cart and he's wearing suspenders and stuff like that. The European mind boggles. Are you a popcorn topping guy? I hate to like continue to become a caricature of myself. I I would say I I am a popcorn topping guy, but I got into it age 11, age 12, going to the movie theater, you get a popcorn and they would have at the popcorn bar where you put like milk and cream into your popcorn, like cinnamon and stuff like that. They would have little shakers of like dill pickle seasoning, cheddar seasoning, you know, barbecue seasoning. And I would I would always go like this. Then at some point they took away the shakers and they started selling like individual bags of popcorn topping that you have to buy from the concession stand. And I said, no, that's enough. I'm not, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not, you're not, you're not getting me hooked for free. And then I'm going to pay you two fifty dollars every single time I go to the multiplex just to get to the same level of flavoring that I've become adjusted to. It's just not going to happen, brother. How are the Jazz this year? Oh, a legendary Joker. Creates a negative copy of one random consumer with them. We're going to the moon, bro. Get out of my face. Are you Poke Rogue pilled? I will never interface with the Pokemon community ever again. What's crazy is that like a bunch of 16 year old kids from Ecuador are like, yes! We cyber bullied him out of the fandom. But like, I think I just, I, I kind of hit my limit last night seeing, uh, I, I don't care if it actually, if it duplicates death, it might even be better. Looking at the, and it's not like, I'm not sore about it. It's just like this, I'm, it's a community that honestly, for me, I'm like, it, it's just a red flag that so many people who have named themselves like Pokemon trainer Bill or whatever are like, you know, I can't believe this guy doesn't, he didn't watch the video essay on the name the nomenclature of Luxray. Like I, I clicked on somebody's profile and they were like mad about my joke. And I knew that they were mad because they said they weren't mad. They were just unamused. And then like they were saying things that I'm like, I just want to sit down and have like a cup of coffee with them and just talk to them like person to person. They were like, if you ever want to talk about like the names of a Pokemon or the types of a Pokemon, it's irresponsible to not know the origin of the Pokemon. And I was like, what the fuck is the origin of the Pokemon? Some dude in Kyoto was like, we need 37 more new Pokemon for the next gen. And then some dude chain smoking cigarettes was like, what if a cat shot lightning bolts? Like what the, 
Is it worth, you know, engaging in cyberbullying, man? It's crazy. People were talking, they were tweeting me shit like I'm John Fetterman or something like that. I'm just making a joke about Pokemon, bro. I understand it's part of your identity, but he will not divide us. Yeah, this is, stop reading what you want to read and all of it. Learn, motherfucker. Go to Bulbapedia or watch Lockston's videos. Simple as that, unless you don't want to be smart. And I'm not sure if that was the exact comment that I saw, but I was like, man, I just, it's just not worth it. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you, but like, you can have your fandom, okay? It's clearly working out for you. Sorry I made a joke that, honestly, if I would like to think if I was a Pokemon, making a joke about something that I'm a fan of would be a cause to, like, bring someone into the circle and say, that's funny. Thank you for talking about my community. But instead, I don't know, I'm not going to blame, you know, the current generation. It's not their fault. Most of them are, like, 16 years old. But maybe we cooked society by getting everybody addicted to platforms that are, like, designed to make them angry 24-7. On the other hand, Observatory is pretty good. Now we got people that are like filibustering on Twitter because some dude was like not even rude, but like kind of dismissive about a video game that they don't even like, but they named themselves after and now it's too late to back out because they have Stockholm Syndrome. No disrespect or whatever. Plus, I'm a fan of the, of the Pokeheads, bro. We're fans of Small Ant here. We're fans of Point Crow. We're fans of Wolfie. We're fans, we're fans of, of Poke Challenge. We were fans of them all. Now, do I watch their content? No, but that's because I'm just busy. I'm not watching much. Peach Chow, yeah, exactly. Fandom is destroying the internet. Well, it's not helping. You know what it is? And I, it, don't take this the wrong way. I mean this in like a, a way that at least, let's just call it food for thought. Nobody like grows up to be bigger bullies than people who were bullied when they were in school. I think it's like it it causes like a formative change in your brain when you're growing up. That's like people were mean to me, so like the way that people get by in this world is by being mean to people. This is gonna be like a, a take that's not gonna make some people happy. It is it's hurt people, hurt people, I guess. Yeah, that's a good way to put it without being offensive. What I was gonna say is like some of the dudes from my high school who like were bullies kind of grew up to be like nice guys but some of the guys that they bullied grew up to be like real assholes and i understand why because like they got shit on you know at a very in like an embryonic petri dish stage of their personality like i'm sure it has an impact but at the same time you're kind of you know you're, you're passing your trauma on to other individuals who are just trying to be funny as fuck on twitch like i'm, I'm on your side bro that's a simplistic worldview. It's going to be okay. We're going to get through this together, okay? Plus, of course, it's simplistic. You think I'd, I'd have a theory of everything for, like, human personality? I'm literally, like, stupid. I have a bachelor's degree in the most humanity of all the sciences. Like, you're, you're barking up the wrong tree. I think it's kind of unrealistic that somebody should be burdened with having to consider absolutely every single data point that's ever existed, either actually observable in the environment or within someone's fucked up headcanon before they say an opinion? That's crazy. Oh, here we go. Hang on. Hang on. Hey, now I saw in a recent video you don't really know what librarians do. I could tell you some of the stuff we do if you want. That would be nice, and I trust you because you have librarian in your name. No disrespect. Uh, you underscore Watanabe. Oh boy, here we go. Me, me, I consent. The actual librarian in chat, I consent. 17 year old kid from Venezuela. Isn't there somebody you forgot to ask? We're learning here, we're having a conversation, okay? Account was created yesterday? Yeah, we're, it's called new user acquisition, something the Peloton Corporation doesn't know anything about. Why is it always South America? We used to say uh, it was 14-year-old kids from the Philippines, and I noticed nobody from South America took offense to that. Just something I'm observing, just something interesting that I'm observing right now. What's this run doing? Uh, the, the crux of this run is, is this engine right here. Burnt Joker allows us to upgrade pair once per round. Per Keo, duplicates are a consumable that we have in our consumable slot, and then Observatory makes every planet here multiply its associated hand score by 1.5. 
Oh, here we go. Okay. Organize the day work for people you usually see in the library, putting books where they belong, finding reservations, helping users, organizing activities for children and adults, host classes for elementary school. We're also in charge of buying the books, doing classification in the system, and doing prep work to make sure a book is ready to be borrowed, amongst a litany of other things. Okay, first off, thank you for telling me and illuminating for me what a librarian does. I think people have taken, and of course I would be biased in this take, but... For me personally, I think people took what I said about librarians to be insulting to the librarian, which is not true. At least it wasn't my intention. It was never my intention to suggest librarians didn't work hard. The one thing I will say, and I want to ask you, and I don't mean anything by this. When I said, do we really need librarians to have to go to school for four years to learn how to do that? I took it, my intention was that wouldn't it be better for librarians if they could just do a two-year program and then start their career two years earlier? Like, that's why why burden yourself with four years of student debt to, to learn how to do that? It seems like they could they could get it done in a, in a, in a two-year program. I'm not suggesting education is bad. I'm just suggesting don't... Wasn't there a little bit of time in your third and fourth year of university for library studies where you were like... I could have sped up this process a little bit if I was in charge. Librarians need a master's? I'm not coming for the librarians. If anything, I'm coming for the schools that are like, you have to have this credential in order to do this job. That's why I'm saying you're, you're, many people are taking me in bad faith deliberately. They got timed out? Well, why? What did they, what did they say? It was all caps? That's not your fault. Okay, hang on. Slash user. Librarian nerd. Okay, let's see. Yes, it would be. It's so annoying to have to do a master's degree. There's no bachelor's degree in documentary sciences. God, I'm so mad. Okay, chat, let this be a lesson to you. And a lesson to me, honestly. I was right the whole time. Uh, the librarians agree with me. And you were just being shit to servers. Okay, that's good. Thank you. You have you've saved my life. And I greatly appreciate that. Thank you. This is a bad precedent. Me, I consent. The actual librarian, I consent. 37-year-old dude with a chin strap from Ohio, I don't. Isn't there somebody you forgot to ask? What the hell? Ohio was asking for it, man. One billion points. I know that the people mad about it aren't even from Ohio. Because the people who are from Ohio are like, OHIO MENTIONED! OH! Dumpa? Sella? Can't you hear me yella? E to the 14? That's like not uh, possible. Isn't that like a hundred times or a thousand times what my last score was? A hundred times, okay. Bro, check out this Mercury though. They're selling for eight bucks a pop. I'm fucking rich, bro. Two glass cards, maybe? You know, okay, here, I can't afford to get rid of a Mercury. Okay, just dump. Dump them. A pair. We can. We got five hands, so like we don't have to. We don't have to overcommit early. We we don't need this card. Now what's great to me is I'm like, oh shit, my next one's gonna be E to the twenty-two, but that's just my brain being stupid. <laughs> I think my next one is going to be 9.8 times e to the 11, and I'm going to be still like 1% of the way to greatness, right? Yeah, you're right. That should go first. It's a very satisfying sound, though. It's a very satisfying sound. One glass? I'm gonna say fuck half joker for now. Let's see if we can draw some more glass. 
We got E to the 13. E to the 13 going once. We'd like you to go twice. All of, no, 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 wait, let me think about first card. We'd like you to go second. Okay. E to the 13! They said it couldn't be done. You're breaking half Joker? Relax, I want to tell you something, okay? We got 60 molts just from the hand. And you might, this red box right here indicates what number our molt is uh, or as the score is going to pass. 20 molts? Fucking meaningless, bro. We're on anti-14. You're telling Bill Gates that he dropped a quarter like six blocks back. He's not going to go back. He's not going to send anybody back. He's just going to take credit for building an organic toilet that doesn't require flushing and also doesn't work. It's 20 times 1.5 to the 32. Yeah, but you're, that's why I brought up the flat mold to begin with, because we got 60 right here. Adding a third to our score, like initially, is not going to get us even close to where we need to be. It's a, I, that's why I did it proportionally instead of, like, um, in, in just in terms of its magnitude. 80 is bigger than 60. Let Princess Trevor's serve, uh, sacrifice serve as a warning to the rest of you. Looks like we'll be playing this. <laughs> oh, 07, though. Did the best we could, honestly. 1.214 times E to the 13. Pretty good. Pretty, I can't be mad about that. Okay, slash marker. Call that Balatro 2. Gold stake complete. I am going to go get set up for the sponsored stream. I'll be back in two minutes. See you then. <clears throat> Slash marker. Hex Guardian. Wake up, honey. New roguelite tower defense. Tetro Nemo. Is that how you say it? Game has come out today on Steam from Yogscast Games, who I will thank for the sponsorship. Thank you. This is Hex Guardian. My mistake. Holy LeBron James scream if you love tower defense games. Ah! Raising my economy. Choosing which tower to pl placing down arrow towers. You know what I'm saying? Hang on, I gotta turn the music down. Just ooh, kind of moist with it. Anyway, exclamation point hex guardian, which you can see spelled in the bottom right of the screen. And you can get some more information on it yourself, or if you're watching on YouTube, the link will be in the video description. Go check it out. It came out on Steam today, and we love the Yogs Cash games around here. We we love played up. We love golfy. We love, hang on, let me just, I mean, this wasn't in the contract or anything. I just want to, I want to go look at the catalog. Let me take a look at the games. Aces and Adventures, the most, the Balatro before Balatro existed. Drink more Glurp. Trolley Problem Inc. I remember, Landlord Super. You know you're cooking when I forgot about half the dishes, bro. Talk about a, a digital omakase. Hang on, hang on. I'm going to lower the volume ever so much more slightly as well. Enemies have a chance of dropping hexagons when killed, which contains the power to shape the terrain. Let's learn how to place a new land tile. Click on Build New Land Tile. Move the mouse where you want it placed. Right-clicking rotates the grid. It's a little carcassonne? A little carcassonne? Okay, well, they want me to place it here, so I'm going to trust them. Due to the expansion, the path of the enemies has changed. We now have greater defensive depth. Let's build another arrow tower on the newly expanded land to better defend against the invaders. Placing new land tiles in the right location is the key to a successful defense. So I imagine you want to... Because I'm not a tower defense Andrew by default. I started playing them as an adult. So like 14-year-old kids know more about this genre than me because they were raised on, you know, balloons and goldfish crackers. I mean, I was raised on the same cheddar cheese that birthed you as well. Don't get me wrong. I was just playing like Mega Man X instead. So I need to like debug my own mental algorithm for strategy when I play these games. I need to say it. The things that you hold self-evident, Abraham Lincoln, I need to say them explicitly. We want to make the maze longer so we have more time to kill the enemies. The archery range will automatically recruit two archers. They will be re-recruited when they die. You see how little you mean to this kingdom? 
They didn't even say anything about like a funeral or a pension or anything. We have obtained another land tile. Let's build it at the entrance of the river. Bro, they can't go home! They, you thought that you were invading us, now you're stuck here forever! We just created a cul-de-sac, bro. Welcome to Ohio. Great job. The new land tile connects the two entrances of the river, which means the enemy boats can no longer enter from there. Oh, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Ranged units are fragile. Keep them away from roads. Okay, well, they're, they're, they're on a road as we speak, bro. Can I put... Dude, you can put them across the river. And, like, it impedes their range a little bit, but, like... I guess it may be, can they be attacked in the grass? Probably not, huh? So if we put them on the grass, they're probably just chilling. I thought about putting them across the river, though. I thought that could be pretty slick with it. Let's just put them right there. Critical hit chance increased by 40%. Damage increased by 20%. I'm a crit-based Andrew. Let's, let's make our archers finesse. Spend money to upgrade towers or barracks. I got it. Okay, we got 14 lads coming from this direction. Let's be honest, we're going to need a little bit of help here. We could build another archery. Oh, wait, we should build another archery range because... What have I done? I've turned this into a, a real-time strategy game. That's not my genre, bro. I should have stuck with the towers that attack automatically instead of messing around here with the, the towers where you actually have to manage units. This is a terrible decision. You are now breathing manually? Why would you do that? Why would you do that to me? I'm already... I'm already overwhelmed, and we're on day three. Critical hit damage increased by 70%. Obviously, we're... I'm the kind of guy... I know how to play roguelites. Whatever you choose as your first upgrade, every subsequent upgrade, no matter how stupid the strategy is, must be in exactly the same theme. Me and the boys pulling up to every librarian tweet to make it go viral. True, true. The three on the left are doing nothing. They have a minimum, a, a maximum range from their origin point, bro. Other, you never read the Art of War. You don't want them to become overstretched to the point where that they they bust the supply lines, and then all of a sudden, before you know it, like the armies of the three kingdoms are, you know, rampaging. You ever read the Art of War? Half of it is like it's bad morale for soldiers when their friends die. I haven't read it because I'm not a CEO, but I have heard that about it. Like, 90% of the book is, like, soldiers eat, like, one pound of corn for every 10 miles that they march in a day. And then the other 10 pages are, like, you know, horses run fast or something like that. Isn't there a meme that Sun Tzu is like, uh, you should deceive your enemies. And then the Chinese general next to him is like, whoa! Can you click those treasure chests? Whoa! <laughs> You genius. You just like tripled the economy, bro. I had no idea. Click on the treasure chest. <laughs> Holy cow. Write that down. Write that down. That's like Sun Tzu's The Art of War for video games, man. Sun Tzu be like in a tower defense game, use towers. That's damn true. Favorite battle tactic? I'm a different kind of beast. I guess I'd have to say like uh, deception. This is just me personally. I'm not trying to make any enemies. Can I Can I not go? Because I need a half river tile. I screwed it up. Do you win by ending all lineages? I think you uh, win by just surviving as long as possible. So we're probably like pretty close to setting the world record right now. I don't think we're ever good. I think I've made a mistake trying to join water and, and land. No disrespect to the coelacanth or whatever that first fish was that grew legs. That was me. Well, you've doomed all of us. You decided you wanted to get a little tan and now we all got to pay income tax for the rest of our lives. Arrow tower damage increases. The most passive upgrades I could possibly get. Okay, now let's stay. You're coming from here? Brother, I, the strategy is becoming apparent. How about we stop 26 swordsmen from coming, actually? Oh! Now give me another life ender. Another lineage breaker, please. Look, at I'm not a tower defense expert, but like raw talent can carry you far. We're already two weeks in. No siege in human history has ever lasted this long, so we're already like one of the best to ever do it, without a doubt. 
Uh, I'm realizing it'd be nice to have an ice tower like right here and then just click this button in panic as fast as you can. Y Yogg's Cast Games, you should know, my brain uh, is like shape agnostic. This is actually like an exact replica of a part of an intelligence test that I failed when I was in elementary school. So like it's kind of, it, it's, it's bringing up some uncomfortable memories for me. Let's put it that way. Fraser playing this be like how droll tiles. I get you. Kill five enemies with a single shot of a cannon tower. I mean, I'm going to level with you. I don't think anybody's ever lasted this long. And I'm not sure how much longer my video card's going to last if these enemies don't die faster. Place your bets. Do we live through day 20? Honestly, I, I kind of feel bad because this was my first run ever. We're going to unlock some permanent progression via our talents, and then we're never going to lose again. Like, the next one, we're going to day 30, without a doubt. That being said, we did just die. Still pretty good, though. 540 trophies for surviving 19 days. Three new achievements. One thing I would say, it would be nice if there was, like, a control click. Or, like, a group click, so I could send all archers over here. But I understand they're spawning from, like, a different... Uh, different bases, but... I mean, you guys are the computer programmers. You figure it out. <laughs> okay. How about you guys? Just meet me over here. You guys are trapped there forever. That's fine. Do what you can. You guys, just if you could just come over here, that'd be great. We'll add it to the roadmap. Thank you, thank you. I, don't make me submit a ticket on Jira. Mostly because I'm running out of words that I know about software development. People still use Jira. One of the last projects I did in school, it was the first time I ever used Trello. And like, it was good. Don't get me wrong. Like we, uh, I mean, it, it, it's good at what it does. But I will say that I realized why uh, a software development team needs multiple people. Because some people thought they wanted to be computer programmers, but as soon as they got access to Trello, they immediately turned into project managers. It was a nightmare to try to get them to like write a function. But if you needed, so hey, like, you've got some uh, urgent things marked as yellow on Trello when they should be marked as red. And I've created a new category. This category is called themes. And we've added like a board under that that then has all of the sub themes. And then if you could move your tasks into the relevant sub theme to help us stay organized. I'm not knocking project managers. You probably need them, okay? But I was in the guts, man. I was in public static, void, main, open parentheses, arg, square brackets, okay? And I was like, I'm dying over here. I need help. By the way, we're dying over here. We need help. Honestly, right off the bat, fishing hut. <laughs> we don't even have any houses, man. Oh, yet. We don't have any houses yet. So we want to make one long tower or one long path that the boss is forced to go down. My treasure chest. Don't do this because it's going to make it very hard to close off these river paths. Okay. Okay. How about that? This, this seems good. Give me some gold. Send it. Restart? Why? Can I just get like, oh, <laughs> I literally, I'm holding R. I'm holding R. <laughs> You're right, I'm not going to get a piece that has a road connector there. Yeah, 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 you're right. Okay, start me again. You also have Boat Boss in three days? I don't know if that's going to be a relevant concern. <laughs> Please! Okay, we made it to six days on that one. Let's try again. You need the bounce on the fire turrets? You need to bounce on this. We don't say that. That's sexual harassment. We say, I need him bouncing and moaning on it. And then if HR says, hey, why did you say that? We say, I just bought a new trampoline this weekend. One of these days, we're going to live until we see the boss, and it's going to go crazy, okay? <laughs> like six days. Is that as long as we survived last time, too? Get him, lad. They're in the road! 
Whatever. They're, they're body blocking, bro. They're body blocking. We're cooked. New record, though. Day nine. Okay, note to self. I don't know if cannons are the way. I would love to see a boss at some point. <laughs> I'm so bad. Do we live through day 11? I honestly think the answer is yes. Good game, guys. Good game. We go again. Back to base. 160 of these. Okay, plus 20% from map difficulty. I got one more in me for sure. I got one more in me. Return me. 07. I don't... You think this is 07? I don't think this is 07 at all. 43 Axemen. Versus a fishing hut. <laughs> Bro, they're going to be winded by the time they get hit by the arrows. So I'm not even sweating this. Please. That's not going to happen. Oh, we're so close on the bridge piece. You? It's called target selection, sweetheart. Okay, good game. We died. We died. <laughs> oh! Yeah, I think I might have bronchitis, but we're working it through. Also, somebody in the Peloton Discord who was a pharmacist said, hey, there's over-the-counter medication you can get. Um, just don't overdo it. And I said, what is it? And they were like, it's inhalable epinephrine that we give to patients who have like chronic bronchitis. And all you have to do is ask the pharmacist and they legally have to give it to you. I was like, oh shit. I made sure to write in chat because this is my libertarian ideal for how the healthcare system should work. I wrote in chat, if taking this medicine kills me, then I legally absolve you of all wrongdoing and I renounce the right for my estate to sue you. Because I thought it was only fair. They did something nice for me, so I wanted to do something nice for them as well. No way that's legally binding. I wrote it and I just admitted to writing it. It should be legally binding, in my opinion. I guess that's not how the law works, but like, they don't know if I'm under duress off camera. You ever read about people getting addicted to no nasal spray? I have, and I, I don't want this to just be like, um, you know, I guess I'm built different. But like, how do you get addicted to it? It doesn't do anything. It does even less than caffeine, which does almost nothing. Like, last time I got congested, I bought Dristan, which is an over-the-counter, like, nasal spray. And I, for like a week, I would spray it once a day in my nose, and it alleviated none symptoms. And then I got Flonase. Hang on, I've unlocked a voucher, apparently. Flonase is like one step up from Dristan, and it, it also does nothing. Please stop touching your chin with one finger. I can't stop. I know, like, I, I'll acknowledge that it's annoying as well. I can't stop. It just feels right. When playing Balatro, it feels right to have my finger here. How's mewing going for you? I've been doing it every day, but I don't know if you can necessarily see it because I've also been buying two kilogram bags of pretzel chips from Costco and eating like three bagels a day. But I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing the work. Me getting my Chad card revoked because they don't believe that I've been mewing because I put on eight pounds. No! Does mewing hurt? If you're bad at it, yeah. They took everything from me. It's not the mewing, bro! I just got the munchies! Danji, cheese maxing diet incoming. Dude, I was thinking, I was talking about it with Kate. I apologize to Dan if he takes this as an insult, but I mean it as a compliment. She was asking me about Dan's cheese diet, and I, I came to the what I believe is a startling realization that it's possible that Dan and I are neuroatypical in the same way, but with different manifestations. Like, I would never be like, I want to go on a high-protein diet, Google 
foods high in protein and then just eat a pound of whatever the first food on Google was a day. But I can also see how other domains of my life I could do exactly that. Like I, I, I st stuff that I'm not as familiar with, I could totally see myself being like, I'm just going to Google, you know, best, uh, you know, how much should a gold chain cost at Howard Ratner's store in Uncut Gems and then walking into Shoppers Drug Mart and being like, what the heck? I thought these things were supposed to be like 7,500 bucks. I think that Dan and I are a little, you know, off kilter in a very similar way, like kindred spirits, but with on, on different paths. Like, I would never go to an Italian restaurant and be like, can I just get the pasta sauce? That's insanity to me. But like, I don't know. Like, it doesn't seem that different than, than some stuff that I could do, for sure. I've been through periods of my life where I just, you know, I mean, Kate always talks about the hard taco shell with shredded cheese on it that I put in the microwave. That was literally one time. Nobody remembers the time I made beef wellington for Valentine's Day, but you, you, you're a bachelor for one weekend while your wife's away. You eat a hard taco shell with shredded cheese in it, thinking that it's nachos, and all of a sudden, that's all anybody wants to talk about forever. Okay, I see how it is. At least get soft tortillas. Well, the reason I was doing it was because I didn't have food in the house and I wanted to keep recording Isaac episodes. It wasn't like, oh, I'm going to go grocery shop and then have like the most fucked up meal of all time. That would kind of like defeat the point, you know? If I was going out to buy groceries, I'd probably, there's a lot of things I'd change, to be honest with you. <laughs> the problem is, and you might, some of you out there might be my own unique brand of insane as well. You might be like, uh, what's the problem? Isn't that just like nachos? It is. But when they make the tortilla chips, they're sending their best. When they uh, make a hard taco shell, at least the old El Paso Corporation, they're not sending their best. You have to bake them. I'm not baking anything that comes in a box, okay? Should be ready to go. I guess except for many things like frozen pizzas, chicken fingers, french fries, stuff like that. Okay, so basically everything. Cake? I'm not gonna... What? Cake mix? I haven't made cake mix. I gotta imagine, I, I don't think I've made cake from a cake mix since I was like literally seven years old. I'm not knocking it. Maybe I should get back into it, bro. Stanley Kubrick's son or Stan, Stanley Tumblr daughter? Great question, VIP Yelnets. Fantastic question. You already know my answer is it's Stanley Kubrick's son on that one. And it takes a lot to get me to say son instead of daughter because I'm constantly accused of being a misogynist, despite being one of the best streamers at naming women, as has been uh, talked about ad nauseum on Twitter and verified by big four accounting firms. What about Stanley Tucci, non-binary child? I'd, ha I'd have to go... Stanley Tucci, non-binary child, then Stanley Kubrick, son, then Stanley Tumblr, daughter. Balatro, son, or Isaac, daughter? Can I, can I get into a, a dilemma with this that I think is an interesting, it illuminates something interesting about our world? Balatro, son, or Isaac, daughter? We go uh, Isaac, daughter. But if it comes down to... Balatro daughter or Isaac's son. We go Balatro daughter for sure. I think I just hate men. Hello, Chibli. Hi. This what I'm about to say is the textbook definition of sexist, but it's sexist in a way that reflects positively on women. So I think you're going to say I'm based for it. When I think and obviously I'm biased because I get blowback from the Isaac community for not knowing every single edge case interaction between items in the game. When I think of Isaac's son, I think of a 22 year old kid yelling at me in the comments and calling me an idiot because of a mistake that I made. When I think of an Isaac daughter, I think of a lady wearing a graphic t-shirt who's like, oh yeah, I like that game. Maybe that's presumptuous, but that's just the first thing that pops into my head. I'm sure there's lots of trolls who are women out there too, making my life miserable. And then when you flip it, it's the same thing. When I think of Balatro's son, I think of some guy who's gonna be like, you have to put the steel queens after the regular queens. Ah, 
When I think of Balatro daughter, I think of someone who's like, bro, the Joker is so square. Which one would you choose, bro? Hearts of Iron 4 daughter. Let's not go crazy. You're right. Women are type B chatters. Well, not during React Court, but during during Balatro, I would, and I, I I appreciate it by the way. I'm thankful for it. In React Court, there <laughs> the, the roles get switched for sure. Immolate just scares me because I refuse to lose this guy. On the other hand, if we make our deck thin, it's easier to get pairs. It is tempting to just get like another. Yay! It's tempting to get another blue seal, but. I actually pumped my fist. That's so fucking embarrassing, dude. I went, yay! <laughs> That's so sad. Do you think AVGN actually played the shitty games that sucked ass? Yeah. Yeah, I think he did. It's my belief that he did. Did you know, so like, 2012, I'm just telling you this because you, you, you might not have been alive at that point. 2012... Maybe 2013, PewDiePie started a uh, Dark Souls Prepare to Die edition Let's Play. There was a conspiracy online, and this is really, like, I've been trying to learn this lesson for 12 years and, like, failing at it. That the internet discourse surrounding, like, content creators is largely driven by people who are still in middle school. It's a very healthy thing to keep in mind when you are a content creator, but either way. PewDiePie started a Dark Souls Let's Play, and there was a conspiracy theory that he was doing too good at the game, he must have actually hired someone to like play the game for him, and then he just did the commentary over top of it. Which is like, oh, the Ludwig? Oh, see, now I'm out of the loop. What, what did Ludwig do? Ludwig style? He did the exact same thing to <laughs> for Dark Souls for Melee. Oh, but he like, he did it as a prank, right? Like, he was like, you don't know you're going up against a pro or something like that. They were saying, like, PewDiePie is doing it because, like, there's no way this dude could ever beat, you know, the Bell Gargoyles without hiring somebody to do it for him. It's crazy, man. I remember thinking, like, listen, the conspiracy theory is obviously false. But if it were real, he would be like the worst businessman of all time. Because like, oh, I'm playing video games for a living. Ah, but I don't think I could beat this boss. You know what I'm going to do? Uh, fucking outsource the fun part of my job and then just sit here commentating over someone else playing a single player game for like eight hours. Like, what are you doing, bro? What are you doing, bro? I'm winning. Perhaps you've heard of it. I'm freaking rich. You know, at some point we gotta take a, a gamble on getting a more useful Joker. That's not the one. <laughs> Get him out of here as soon as possible, please. That's not the one. That's not the one. Nice try. Oh, I guess he's gonna buy... I mean, I guess I'm gonna buy the crystal ball. I think I should buy the Arcana pack too. Oh wait, I guess I'm he's just I'm gonna invest in rerolling first. Um and then maybe I like I don't know what what's going on with the oh oh yeah, no, I'm gonna buy it now. I just felt like I'll buy it now. Are you a complete cookie enjoyer? I had one, it wasn't so bad. It's not your fault, but there's like a menacing aura coming off this question. Why do I feel that there's a menacing aura? A the human brain fears the unknown, and I don't know what a complete cookie is, except eating an entire cookie in one sitting. I don't know if it's like a brand name or something, or if I'm being ligmud. And then, cookies are normally a good thing, a tasty thing. So the second uh, thing that made me uneasy was when you said it wasn't so bad. Which for me is what like the doubles say in like invasions of the body snatcher after the aliens duplicate them and make them an automaton for terraforming the planet or i guess fucking xenoforming the planet or whatever it's called when aliens make earth into goo oh it was crumble Cr why didn't you say so crumble cookies i've had crumble cookies 
Um, I'm... You may remember from the, from the Crumble discourse several months ago. I'm, I'm neither pro nor anti crumble cookie. One cookie is like 900 calories. Yes, they are not good for you. That's what was bothering me about the, dis, uh, the discourse, to be honest, was that everyone was like, look at this cookie. It's bad for you. Why would anyone eat this? As soon as you touch one of the cookies, you don't need some 22-year-old on Twitter to tell you how many calories it is. They weigh like a pound and a half each. There's no, no idiot on planet Earth is dumb enough to eat it and be like, I bet this isn't that bad for me. It's literally like a mountain of flour. So like that, whenever people were like, I, don't, I can't believe that people would eat this. I'm like, people, are you crazy? People are drinking 2,500 calories of beer a day. Like it's a, people... Why do people do it? Because they fucking taste good, bro. That's why people do it. Just because you're not doing it, I can't believe that anyone would ever eat these. Because the human brain loves sugar, dummy. You, I'm, I'm not anti- that, The reason I'm like semi-anti-crumble if I'm anti-crumble is because I would rather have like two tasty cookies instead of one enormous cookie that's like 30% uncooked flour in the middle. But that's just me. That's just me personally. I had to lay it on thick with the discourse here because we're going to lose anyway. And the video is too short to put on YouTube by itself because we're dying on anti-5. <laughs> but like, if you don't like Crumble as a business, that's one thing. When people are like, like the existence of Crumble was like an affront to their city, I'm like, I mean, no disrespect, but get a life. Who cares, bro? It's a, it's a cookie store. Like, it's not that serious. I don't know why in my head I was like, we're gonna make it. <laughs> oh, man. No, fuck Crumble. Their delivery vehicles are all F-150s where I live. Okay, but have you considered that um, that's because anybody getting a delivery of crumble cookies 100% has voted Republican for the last seven federal elections in a row? Like, that's just brand customer alignment. Like, if they showed up in a Toyota Prius, people would go buy from, like, freedomcookie.com or something instead. Like, that's just knowing your audience. I'm not going to hold it against them. This is product market fit, bro. I'm going to eat a bagel sandwich. Sounds like a delicious lunch. Well, we bought a lot of stuff from Costco. Yeah, bagel sandwich. Bagel sandwich, that sounds good. Go Canucks. Well, the game's tomorrow. I don't know when the NHL went soft, bro. It used to be every other day they played a game in the series. It didn't matter if you were flying from Vancouver to Cuba. They'd be like, you finish game four, hop off the airplane, fly across the continent. You know, game five's two days later. But now the NHL's gone woke. They're, oh, Vancouver to Nashville? That's like a 38-second flight. We got to give them one extra rest day so they don't tear their ACL. Buddy, I'm watching a pirated stream. I'm wearing a homebrewed jersey. I'm watching on stolen Wi-Fi inside of a Starbucks with a laptop that I signed out from the library. I deserve entertainment on demand. They're playing Sea Loves. They need all the help they can get. That's true. That's true. Oh, whoops, whoops, wrong one. <laughs> we may, I, but brother, I don't know. To be honest with you, here's my thoughts on, on the Canucks goalie dilemma. Pack one, pick one, that's your Demko. That's a given. Pack one, pick two, I honestly don't know. Because Casey DeSmith is kind of Casey DeMid. She loves is like an unknown quantity. But I'm a narrative Andrew. So I'm like... Why not let give the kid a chance, man? He's what, 22? He's Latvia's strongest goalie soldier. Give him a chance, man. Also, I will say, I'm, again, it's just sports. But I do want to say, I think even if we beat the Predators, which is still probably likely, I think we're getting rinsed by the Oilers, man. I got bad vibes going into that series. We're on our third string goalie possibly going up against Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl and Zach Hyman and Evan Bouchard. 
and their goalie for the first time in 20 years is actually like playing well, which I didn't know that they were allowed to do on Edmonton. I thought if you were the goalie for Edmonton, like you had to let in seven goals a game. But yeah, well, I, you never let, let's just take it one game at a time. We still got to get through the Predators. The Predators will get rinsed by the Oilers, too. If I'm just saying, OK. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. My wife's got a uh, she's got a, a yellow moon on Discord. What am I supposed to do? I saw her in and I saw it say Yellow moon means she's away None of you stand so tall Yellow moon means no discord call It's a yellow moon Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Yellow, yellow, yellow moon